After recording this video, I jumped on some message boards and it seems as though Electric got this wrong. They're claiming that Tesla's energy app doesn't work. It always gives you the wrong numbers. It's bogus. You shouldn't listen to Tesla. And um, frankly, they're trying to fix a problem that they caused in the first place. Well, it seems as though users disagree. Electric said, Tesla drivers know that most of the time it's actually going to be much lower than the estimate. Well, here's one comment. For seven years, I've always been amazed at how accurately Tesla's app predicts how much range will be left in my vehicle when I arrive at my destination. Hundreds of people seem to have agreed with that comment. So whatever you see in this video, well, so when I talk in this video about Electric's claim that Tesla's app doesn't accurately predict energy usage, well, turns out that appears to be incorrect. This could not have come at a more interesting time. On the same exact day that Tesla announced it has new features in its app, which is free, including range advice and a bunch of other information, Toyota announced within about two hours that they are now charging subscription fees for those services. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm the Electric Viking. Great to see you. Welcome to all the new subscribers and welcome back everyone else. Thanks for tuning in. Hope you've had an amazing week. And it's awesome to see so much, so many people show such a big interest in electric cars this year. The channel over the past month or two, views have really started to go up about, about a million per week. So I just want to thank you for tuning in and being part of that movement towards moving away from crappy old gasoline powered vehicles and and coal energy and all that stuff to electric vehicles and to an electric future. That's really the kind of way we can make the world better for our kids and for ourselves. Tesla's new energy app gives you range advice and a bunch of other things, which companies, uh, other companies are charging for, like Toyota. Tesla has updated its in-car energy app to give a comparison between real energy use and the projected range, and it even gives you range advice to get closer to the optimal range. Range calculations are difficult, says electric, regardless of the type of vehicle, electric or internal combustion engine. And it is, this is true. I think it's unfair the way people focus on EVs by saying the range is never what they claim. We've heard that a lot. This can be true, right? But why does no one say this about gasoline powered vehicles? I mean, for example, Every car I've ever owned has never, ever gotten the claimed fuel efficiency that the manufacturer claimed it would, right? But we never say that. We never mention that. We just go, oh, that's okay. We're willing to deal with that. But if an EV doesn't get the claim range, it's we're up in arms about it. It's a big problem. So I think we should probably be fair in the way we judge all products. We should judge them in the same way. That's what I, that's what I suggest. Now, there are so many factors that can affect the efficiency of a vehicle on a road, whether that's gasoline or electric, it's hard to determine how far it can go on a full battery pack or a tank of gas. I mean, for example, if you're going up a lot of, up and down a lot of hills, a lot of stopping and starting, for example, stopping and starting is not a problem for EVs. In fact, their efficiency is really good when with stopping and starting because, of course, you recharge the battery when you press the brakes. In pretty much every EV, you use regen braking, so it's actually a good thing. Whereas gasoline-powered vehicles in that situation, their range is much worse than claimed. But of course, the inverse is true on freeway driving. Now, the thing is, having an accurate range predictor on your car, though, is probably the single biggest thing you can do, or the single biggest thing a company can do, in my view, to actually cure this problem we have with range anxiety. What's range anxiety? It's the fear that you know you're going to be stranded. Your car's going to run out of power. You're going to be stuck in the middle of nowhere or you know stuck anywhere. It doesn't really matter if it's in the middle of nowhere. It's a big frustration, a big hassle. Not everyone has a friend with another EV who can come and just put some juice into your EV. I mean, not everyone has that ability to do that and you don't want to put yourself in that situation. So range anxiety is legit. I get that. But I think if you have on your vehicle a way you can really tell how far you can go accurately, then your range anxiety will decrease. Now, if you also have the ability to be able to see where you can charge your car, for example, one of the big benefits that many people talk about on Tesla forums is the fact that with your Tesla navigation system, you can put in your destination and then the app will actually tell you where to go. 
where to go, when to stop, where to stop, where the charges you should go and stop at are. And so you don't have to do any of that yourself. You don't have to think through, okay, where do I need to go? Where's the gasoline station? Where's the charger? What do I have to do? It just does it all for you. Electric says Tesla has been a leader in efficiency and long range vehicles now for a long time. But despite that, it still does have issues predicting the accurate energy consumption in a trip. When entering a destination in the, na in the navigation system, Tesla gives the driver the expected range, meaning remaining at the destination. But Tesla drivers know that much of the time, it's going to be lower than the actual estimate. So back in 2018, Tesla added more environmental factors to their trip planner to give people better, well, more accurate range predictions on their destination. Elevation changes, weather, temperature, etc. This helped, but many people say it still wasn't accurate enough. You put a destination in the system and Tesla's TripAdvisor will tell you how much energy you have left by the time you get there, but apparently it's not rare to see the amount of energy go down fast as you drive, or faster than what you would have expected. Earlier this year, Tesla put a renewed focus on range prediction using crosswinds, headwinds, humidity, temperature, and ambient temperature in a software update. This was able to make this system much more accurate. In July, Tesla again released a new update that went even further by adding several other factors in its range calculations, including tire pressure and even phone charging. These changes are now leading to a more in-depth in-car energy app for Tesla vehicles. In the new app, you get a more detailed description on how and when you are deviating from the projected range. It even gives you range tips to get closer to your optimal range projection. The examples above are the most obvious ones. These are generally slow down, right? Go slower, you get longer range, and keep your climate control down. Now, Tesla's new energy app breaks down energy consumed in miles or kilometers from more sources, including sentry mode and screen time. So Electric says that this added information on where your car's energy is going other than propulsion can help you make better decisions to optimize for range instead of comfort when needed. Now, one of the things some drivers have actually done on their Teslas is fold the mirrors in because you can get better range if your mirrors are folded in. Not that I suggest you do that because it's illegal, but you can see how there's a focus on efficiency and range with EVs. Now, the thing is here, right? These services, they're all free. Tesla's app, it's free. Tesla continues to try to upgrade their cars in these ways. And when they upgrade them, you don't pay for that. It's free. The competition, Toyota announced within 24 hours today that to use their, well, their equivalent to this, which is not all that good, it doesn't use all these factors to determine range, it's just a basic simple system, you've got to pay. So you need to pay a subscription fee to use Toyota's maps. Uh, Tesla gives it to you for free and they update the way it works. They make it work better over time. Those are the free updates that are delivered to you over the air, over the internet. You don't pay for that as a subscription fee. In my view, that's the future. In my view, all car manufacturers should be doing that. I don't agree with this new this new idea that BMW, Mercedes, Toyota, and General Motors have that we should all be paying subscription fees to drive our cars and just use basic services that we need. Paying for these services, in my view, is, to be honest, ridiculous. I think everyone should be following Tesla's lead here, but I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe, maybe these... Maybe Toyota coming out and charging for things that uh, used to be standard or, you know, unlocking your car remotely, which you can do in a Tesla for free, and Toyota now charges for. Maybe it is fair. Maybe Toyota is doing the right thing. Let me know. What, what do you think? What are your thoughts on this? Will you Would you be willing to pay Toyota for these things that Tesla are doing for free? Do you think that's reasonable? And do you think you would consider this when you buy a car? Like when you go to buy a vehicle from a dealership, from a Toyota, and Toyota says, well, if you want to get those things there, there's three three different levels of subscription levels. Uh, if you want to get this, you got to pay this per month. If you want to get that, you got to pay that per month. Would you? Would that affect your purchasing decision up front? Let me know your thoughts. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.